Hello everyone! In this video, I will show a super simple way to do some web automation. So we'll use something called a text web browser, which is just a web browser that shows you some text rather than images. You are probably using web browsers all the time, but you may never heard of a text web browser. Uh, but I think it is a pretty handy tool when you want to do some automation with web pages. So first of all, let's look at the problem that we are trying to solve. Um, we simply want to buy some Lego sets, but it's sold out. That's annoying. You may be able to find one on eBay or something, but that may come with hefty premium. So let's say we refuse to pay the premium because, I mean, money. So in principle, you can keep checking this web page until it becomes available, then you buy it. But who knows when it becomes available, right? So that means we need a script that monitors and let us know when it becomes available. So how can we do that? I mean, the first inclination is just writing some script. I mean, I know Python, so maybe you should write a program that monitors the website, right? So maybe you can start writing some code like this. But this is still pretty annoying to do. I mean, you need to download the web page and parse it and match some strings. And especially if this web page has some dynamic elements, it becomes even more annoying. So let's say that we are consumed by this incredible laziness. And I really don't want to write more than a couple of lines code. I mean, it's just about buying some Lego, right? So should we really need to write that much code? And that's where those text web browsers comes in handy. They are literally web browsers, but only with text in the command line interface. So we run them in the terminal and they try their best to render a website with text. Let me show you an example. Probably the most famous text web browser is called Links. You can launch it by simply calling links in the terminal. So let me open Wikipedia with links. Let's put it here and a usual web browser here. And as you can see, links is actually a decent browser, at least for Wikipedia. Of course, it ignores all the complex layouts and images, but you can still navigate up and down with arrow keys and click a link by pressing enter and go back by pressing the left arrow. It's simple and gets job done. As long as the website is mostly text-based. But you may be wondering, okay, but this is just an inferior web browser, right? But remember that this is a software that runs in the command line interface. That means it has many options and parameters you can use, and you can integrate into your script. And there is a particularly powerful option that really makes Lynx browser shine. It is called the dump option. If you put this option, it doesn't bother to launch an interactive browser. Instead, it just downloads the web page, renders it with text, and then dumps it to the standard output. It even collects all the links nicely at the end of this render page. And that means automation. So let's try dumping that Lego website. And open up this temporary file. And if you scroll through, Yeah, we can see that the string sold out. That means we can try to grab it. Yep, 
Yes. Now we have a very simple one-liner that tells us whether a Lego set is sold out or not. But let's look at also the available cases. Let's find another Lego set that is available. Uh, dump again, graph it again, and it doesn't return anything. We can also grab available now string, and it works. And this means we have now a really simple way to check whether a Lego set is available without even writing two lines of code. So now we want to run this comment again and again. How can we do that? So let's Google bash while loop clip maybe. And there we go. Uh, we can find a nice one-liner that just repeat with some slip in between. So this is quite simple. Then we can simply change uh, this slip part into something like this. To link back to the script we have just created, we have a while loop that just keep checking the Lego website. And actually, we already have working script, which is this one line, that just keep tracking the Lego website until the Lego set is available. So in a way, this is already getting the job done. It's just not that convenient because it will just keep printing or not printing in the command line. So that means we need to like check the command line time to time. So it doesn't pop up any notification window or something. So if you are not looking at the terminal, you may not notice this important information. So even if the scripts find out that it becomes available, it will just keep printing in silence. So how can we let this script notify us? So I can think of two really simple ways to handle this. Uh, the first way is making the computer talk to us. And the second way is using notification window. So in macOS, there is a super handy utility called Say. As you can probably guess, it just makes your computer say whatever you pass it. Bullsh I don't know about the Windows, but Linux also has a similar utility called eSpeak. So you can use that instead. Hello. Anyway, this means that you can use it as a really simple notification tool. Bye bye bye. Another way is just popping up a notification. This is also surprisingly easy, at least in macOS. So if you Google Mac, how to use system notification, comment line. Of course, there is a Stack Overflow question. And it's again a nice sweet one-liner. You copy and paste, test, and it works. Okay, now we want to run this notification only when the graph is successful, right? So of course we can try to use if statement, but there is a slightly more concise way. And it's actually a pretty nice trick that you can use pretty much everywhere. So the trick is using the end operator and the wonderful laziness of our computer. The idea is following. Imagine you have an expression with an AND operator. The thing is, the whole expression is true only if both expressions are true. So that means once we know that the first expression is false, 
the whole expression automatically becomes false. The second expression doesn't matter anymore once you know that the first one is false. In other words, computers can save potentially a lot of calculation by just skipping the evaluation of the second statement in this situation. And that's what most programming languages or systems do. In other words, trying to be as lazy as possible can be a really good thing for computers. So that means we don't need any if statement. We can simply put grab comment before the end operator. Then the program will stop if grab fails. If grab succeeds, then the program will run the next expression. So we can simply put all the notification stuff after the end statement. So let's test. Available. And yes, it works. Now we are essentially done. We just need to put together this script into the while loop and maybe make it into a script that can receive a URL as an argument. And let's test. Voila, we have just created a nice one line automation script for all of our Lego needs. Oh, here's a fun fact about this Lynx browser. Here's a really cool paper. Uh, this is about the network structure of the World Wide Web. By crawling a bunch of web pages and measuring the distribution of the incoming and outgoing hyperlinks, this paper estimated the diameter of the whole World Wide Web at the time. It turned out that the diameter was about 19 clicks, which means that you can more or less reach any web page from any other web page with less than 20 clicks. And it was one of the foundational papers in network science. And actually, two of the authors in this paper were my PhD advisor and postdoc advisor. And my PhD advisor, Hong Zhang, was the one who crawled the network of web pages. And guess what? He used the Lynx browser with the dump option to build a web crawler. Basically, you dump a web page, put all the links at the end into the queue, and go to the next one, do the same, and repeat. And that's how you can build a really simple web crawler. Thank you for watching and see you next time.